I've been using Relay for the last 24 hours and these are my first impressions. So in this video, we're going to talk about the quality of the UX UI, the amount of connectors and some of its special features. So stick around till the end so that you can see if Relay is really for you. Hi, my name is Alex. On this channel, we talk about automation, AI, automating AI and everything else in between. Without any further ado, let's get stuck in. So first thing on the list is user interface. How good is the user interface anyway? How quickly can I navigate the builder and everything else on the website? So I've just logged in and it's kind of minimalistic. There's not a lot going on. My biggest gripe with it is the fact that there is a lot of white space. So right now we're editing one of our automations or what they like to call playbooks. And as you can see, like here, you've got so much white space or on this end or on this end, even if you're editing one of the steps, you still have a lot of unused white space. If you're coming from Zapier, this is kind of normal. There's a lot of white space there as well. Although I feel like over the years, they've tried to mitigate that and they made certain things bigger and kind of clunkier <laughs> to be fair. But uh, yeah, for me, there's a lot of white unused space. It could have been designed a little bit better. And again, this is just a first gen product. I'm sure they're going to improve on that over time. Generally speaking, it's kind of nice, tidy, not much going on. You can definitely get to where you need to go very quickly. No major complaints here. Now, let's talk about connectors. And I feel like connectors is one of those quick determining factors for a lot of people who will want to use Relay the amount of connectors and the quality of actions or triggers that you can have within those connectors. Just because there is a connector doesn't mean that it can do absolutely everything. All right, but my first impressions are that it's okay. There are a lot of the most popular connectors you might want for some of the most popular services in the market. But at the same time, they're not like the best. Let me give you one example. So I'm an Airtable expert. In my agency, we tend to use all of the available Airtable API endpoints. Not so much the case here. I mean, you can add a record, you can update a record, you can get a record. What about delete a record? The Airtable API allows us to do that. Why is it not here? <clears throat> Another major gripe with connectors inside of Relay is that I cannot do custom API calls. Now, this is a little bit advanced, but it's just not there. So it's not great for an advanced user. But generally speaking, you've got a lot of the most popular connectors and that's good. Now, one thing that's kind of missing is the fact that I cannot create a new connector. So if a service is not on Relay, well, you can't do anything about it, which is annoying. That's it in terms of connectors and the quality of those connectors. Now, let's talk about how quickly we can build custom logic. In other words, how quickly can we build paths so that when an automation runs, it there's like some kind of decision tree where, you know, it either goes this way or that way, depending on some business logic that you have preset. Now, I've set up a quick automation here where we have a webhook. What we're trying to do is we're trying to split a full name into first name and last name. So what I want to do is I want to create a decision path to make a few alterations as it goes along. So let's let's do this. So I'm going to choose path and here we have like a rule based path, a manually decided path and an AI based path. So that I give you like a quick explanation, rule based path is what we're kind of used to with make and with Zapier, I would say where you just set up some static rules for each path and depending on the data that comes through, it will choose the right path. Now, there's also a manually decided path, and this is one of those things that Relay is really like pushing for, and that is that human in the loop sort of experience where an automation might run, but you will get notified in an email to say, hey, you need to make a decision on this, and only when you do and you click, then it will continue. So 
that's kind of okay. That's kind of understandable in terms of a goal for an automation platform. But at the same time, most people want automations to just run. Anyway, AI based path. That's the most interesting bit for me. I think it's one of the most interesting things I've seen so far in my short time of using Relay. So let's choose that AI path. So I've got path A and path B. So what I can do here, I can give it a hint. So in other words, if if first name is Tracy and in the other one, certain prompt again, if first name isn't Tracy. And it's really nice that I can use natural language to set this up. Okay, I'm just gonna copy this action. I'm just gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna add it here where in the first name isn't Tracy. I want the last name to be capitalized and have a heart emoji in front of it. That's also kind of nice in the sense that instead of using functions, you can use AI and natural language to modify the data as it's being inputted, as it's being pushed into those services. Let's do that. And I'm just going to copy this action, duplicate, and then we're just going to drag and drop it over here into this path. It's a little bit clunky. I'm not a huge fan of how this works in this sort of tabulated style. It's really annoying visually, especially like what if you have 10 paths? Not my favorite thing. So here I'm just gonna change that. And let's just say last name only include first letter of last name. Let's try and run this. Now I believe this is all saved. Excellent. And I'm just going to run here and I'm going to trigger this record. So this is James. Obviously, James's name doesn't start with Tracy. Still waiting. Still waiting. Let's see if something's broken. Oh, there's one run in progress. There we go. So now something has printed and we are waiting for AI to again capitalize his last name. Oh, OK. So I need to confirm this path. Well, technically, I need to confirm path B. There we go. So it's cool. So now that we've set up our paths, the final thing to double check is over here where we have the review section of each step. Just make sure that you choose no review required. Alternatively, you'll be asked to review and you'll get like a quick little email to ask you to review that particular path choice. We're ready to go. OK, so here we are in Airtable. I'm going to trigger this record, James, and let's see what happens. Hopefully we should be a OK. There's one run in progress right now, and it has finished the first part of the run, which is to extract the first and last names. And now it has chosen this. So extract last name. So this is a bit weird. It didn't do what I told it to do. Let's see what it does with Martha. And remember, we asked it last name to be capitalized and have a heart emoji in front of it. So I don't know why it just gave me the last name with just one letter. Let's see what it does with Martha. Martha Hicks. And now it should capitalize it. Still in progress. It takes its time. And now I have to fix something unable to select a path. So let's say I select it manually and there we go. Now it's capitalized with a heart in front of it. Let's see if it plays ball with Tracy because Tracy it's it's the other path that it needs to take. Now let's see what it does. So it's just fetching Tracy Hernandez. Hernandez should just be a capital H. Path A has been chosen and there we go. Now it worked correctly. Let's talk about syntax. And when I say syntax, I mean the functions that exist in order for you to manipulate data before actually sending it out to be printed in one of the services that you want it to be printed. For instance, in Make and in Zapier, you can manipulate the text before sending it out. But in Make, what you can do, you can apply functions to the text itself right there while you're mapping it. In Zapier, you have to create a whole new step. I mean, over the years, you had to be aware of that. Now they automatically create a step for you. It's still a bit odd, but here you're kind of getting something in the middle. Here's what I mean. 
So let's say I want to get the last name of that person. And the way that it works is that you get your value. Let's say I've got my name, for instance, and I want to manipulate that simple text. All I have to do is just click on this little drop down, and then I have my list of functions. Now, let's say I want to turn this all into lowercase. You see, it's just applying that function for me. It doesn't allow me to manipulate it in any way. It's a little bit restrictive for my taste because I know that I need to be super flexible at all times. But for somebody who's just starting up, this is a nice little addition. And I think it will help that person think in the right terms, in the right context. And you can also, of course, stack these conditions on top of each other. So you can add an extra header case or something like that. You can do it, but it's a little bit odd for my tastes, but it is what it is. Can I blame it? Is it better than Zapier? Yes, it's better than Zapier for sure. So as we're getting closer to my final list of conclusions about Relay, let me share a couple of my favorite things about it, some of my favorite features. So I would say there's two. Number one, I really enjoy how you can use AI instead of functions to manipulate your text. It's not always super accurate, but it's definitely something that I feel is going to come to Zapier and Make and all of the other automation platforms. Functions, they're awesome, but I feel like as AI is progressively getting better and better and better, we need to be using natural language to manipulate the text. Of course, functions are more direct and they have their place, but this is definitely one of my favorite functions, which I wish we had in Make. The second thing, it's how easy it is to create that human in the loop experience. Oftentimes, we need to notify people very quickly that something is happening within your automation and they just need to be in the know about what's going on. Using Make, you can still do that and there's like, error handlers there's a lot of things that are great but at the same time it's not as easy as it being just pre-baked within your step there's like a review for instance drop down where you can just set it to double check before update so that will immediately send me the assignee of this automation a notification that hey dude check this out have a quick look i feel like it's not going to be super useful all the time, but it's nice to know that this feature is there and it's so accessible. So in conclusion, who is Relay for? So in my opinion, Relay is really aimed at beginner automators who are on a budget because right now Relay's pricing is incredibly affordable. It's much more competitive than Zapier. And if we go to Relay's websites over here and we go to pricing, the second thing you see on their pricing page, it's the comparison to Zapier. So if you're a beginner automator and you use some of the most popular apps on the market, Relay is a great alternative to Zapier, especially if you're not planning to build anything super duper complicated. It's a great alternative. I think people should take a look. In terms of myself and my agency, is it going to replace Make? No way. Not a chance. It's not there yet. It's not competing with like enterprise level automation platforms for sure. But I like some of its features. The big question is, will it replace Zapier? I don't think so. I don't think so because Zapier has been around for a very long time. It has taken up and still is taking up a big chunk of the market. And it's really sticky. It has got probably the largest selection of connectors you can find. It's trying to be more flexible and cater for more advanced users because people who have been using Zapier since 2015, 2013, they will have become better automators over time, over the last 10 years. Those people are kind of fed up with the staleness of the process. So they are typically maybe moving into Make or N8M or simply they're rolling with the punches. Because an automation system is so sticky to a business, it's really hard to get rid of it. So I don't think they're going to be replacing Zapier. Maybe some people will be moving to this due to price, but 
if anything, really is just going to be taking up a little bit of that market share of beginner automators who need a, a good, clean platform to build their automations on. That's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of these first impressions of mine. Let me know if you disagree, if you agree on some of the things that I've said, and I'm going to try and answer as many questions as absolutely possible. Thanks so much. See you in the next one. Cheers.